understanding cascading of the Lars pennant controls. We can cascade up to eight pennant boilers. First, confirm that the wiring from your lead to lag or member boilers has been completed. Next, also confirm that your system sensor has been installed on your lead boiler only. And on that lead boiler, on the home screen, you should see the icon for the system sensor. We'll also talk about the padlock symbols. And there are three padlock modes. Lock mode, no adjustments can be made. User mode, you can only make set point adjustments. And lastly is the installer mode. And this is where you want to be, especially for Cascadia. And that password is 17. And I'll show you that in a video shortly. Now, from the configuration menu, choose Cascade. Here you have some options, and I'll talk. The first option I'll talk about is redundant. There are three options here for redundant. First one I'll talk about is disable redundancy. And at the bottom of the screen, I'm showing four boilers. One boiler is the leader, and that lead boiler again gets the system sensor and all the set points as a leader. However, with disable redundancy, someone had to power off that lead boiler due to maintenance or service. There's nothing telling the remaining boilers to come on and operate is redundant lead. Redundant lead, we can actually choose two leaders. So here I'm showing boiler one as a leader. We could also make boiler two as a leader. Boiler two in this example would also need a system sensor. Now, if somebody had to power off one of the leaders for again, maybe maintenance or service, your remaining leader would take over and operate the bank of boilers, giving you backup redundancy. And lastly, is boiler internal set point. And that is how the pennant is defaulted. Uh, what does that mean? That means if you go in and give each boiler uh, an internal set point and you choose boiler internal set point, they'll come on and operate if somebody had to power off that leader your member boilers or lag boilers would come on and operate on their own outlet sensor uh, based on whatever temperature you set them at. How it works is the lead boiler will need to be firing and calling for the member boilers when you power off the lead. When the lead boiler gets powered off, the member boilers will then come on, operate on their own internal set point. Next thing we'll talk about is rotation. Now, rotation, when you choose a leader on that lead boiler, another box will appear. It's called a rotation setup. And what is rotation setup? Um, basically, it, it's to rotate the boilers evenly, get even run time. So, example, maybe today, boiler one is the first one in rotation. Tomorrow, boiler two would be the first one in rotation. The next day, boiler three would be the first one, et cetera, and then boiler four. And again, we can cascade up to eight boilers. Now, back to rotation setup. When you click on that, it gives you a couple of options. Rotation mode. And under rotation mode, it's defaulted for run time. If you click on run time hours, now you can choose. Example, maybe every 24 hours you want to rotate those boilers. Or maybe every 48 or every 72 hours. Uh, choose your value and click the enter button. And this is the enter button on any one of the screens. So even if you're at a set point screen example, I want to choose 160 degree set point. That is your enter button. Next, back to rotation setup. The other option under rotation mode is reoccurrence. Now here, you can actually choose the time of day. In this next example, uh, the hours we set for 7 and the minutes we set for 00. zero. So at 7 a.m., it would do its rotation. And then you would choose how many days. So under every X day, maybe every 24 or every day at 7 a.m., you'd want to rotate the boiler or might maybe every two days or every once a week. Um, so you can get in and uh, change that. So it'll rotate in this example at 7 a.m. Uh, every day we would rotate those boilers. We'll also talk about settings. <clears throat> so here under, this is the pennant addressing. 
Um, and pennant addressing, their range, and this is only on the pennant, is negative or minus one to seven. Uh, minus one means it's unconfigured for a cascading bank. So defaulted, leaving the factory, each boiler should be listed as minus one. The lead boiler gets an address of zero. Your member boilers get an address from one to seven. So again, your lead boiler gets addressed as zero. Now, <clears throat> I talked about backup uh, set point. Also, even on your leader, you wanna click on that backup set point box and give that a value. And this example is 180 degrees. So as boilers, if the leader gets shut off, your member boilers will come on. Now you'll have to uh, do this set point for each lag or member boiler as well. Keep in mind, the lead boiler will need to be operating and calling for the member boilers in order for them to operate on their own set point. So next, my I'll say boiler two, or I continue down the line, um, you need to get into the addressing there and change that address. So again, the lead boiler gets an address of zero. Your member boilers get an address from one to seven, and that is only on the pennant. My next example would be the third boiler in line becomes addressed as two. However, don't forget, you need to go into each boiler or member boiler, hit lost lead backup set point, and change that value to whatever you need. Next, we'll play a video. Okay, your lead boiler should have the system sensor as I explained. You'll see that once it's wired in, you'll see that on the home screen. Now, all of the boilers in the cascading bank will have to be logged in. So here I'm choosing the lead boiler and I'm typing in 17 enter. And now we have the I for installer password. Next, we're gonna to go to configuration and we're gonna choose cascade and you'll see your options here. I also mentioned to you previously about redundancy and it is already defaulted for you for boiler internal set point and we'll go back and set that up in a little bit. I'm going to come back to cascade and I'm going to choose cascade CH for this example. Now that lost lead backup set point I'm going to click on this and we're going to give this a set point and again, this will have to be done not only on the lead boiler, but the member or lag boilers. So for our example, I'm going to type in 170 and choose enter. Click OK. And now you also have your on and off differentials, otherwise known as hysteresis. So here a 170 set point with a 10 degree off hysteresis will give us 180. Our on differential or on hysteresis is also set for 10. If you want to adjust those, just back them out, choose your value, and click OK. So in this example, we now have a 180 off point and a 165 on point. Next, I'm going to come back to address. And this is the lead boiler. I mentioned to you earlier, minus 1 to 7, that's our range. And all of the boilers will be defaulted for minus 1 your lead boiler becomes zero. Now before I type that in, I want to point out lead settings is in light gray. We can't make any changes here. However, when I choose the leader as zero, enter, click OK, our lead settings will become available for us right here. I'm going to click lead settings and now I can get in and do a set point. In my example, here I'll say 175 maybe. Click enter. Now also under here, you've got your off hysteresis or off and on differentials for your set point. That's out at your system sensor. But I also want to choose a max lag temperature. In our example, we used a 170 set point for the member or lag boilers if we lose the leader. This is where you type in that value. So here, for my example, I'll say 175. Now I'll come back to the home screen, and next, we're going to go to the lag first lag boiler. Now I'm using two simulators. So right now, we're showing under Cascade that we're the master of one. This should read master of two, and why doesn't it? 
because we haven't enabled the first member or lag boiler. So now let's go to that boiler. Over here, my first lag boiler, again, you'll have to log in. Typing in 17, enter. Going to go on to configuration. Cascade. In our example, we're doing central heat. Here, I need to give this an address. And my first member or lag boiler becomes 1. So I'll back this out and choose the value of 1. Enter. Now also while I'm here, I want to get into lost lead backup set point that we had spoken about. And on our lead boiler we chose 170, so that we're going to keep this at 170, and that will also carry through. You want to do that on each member boiler. We're only cascading two here. And again, you can do your off or on differentials, and I think we chose previously was 5 degrees. Now when I go back to my home screen, you'll see now cascading appear, one of one. Be patient. So now it's reading one of two boilers. So here we're back at the lead boiler again, it's reading M for master of two. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and give this boiler a call for heat. Now we're pre-purging. Next, we're in HSI warm-up. That's your hot surface ignition warm-up. And this is only a two-stage boiler with one blower and one igniter. Now we're into ignition. And now we're running. So now we're running. We were at 50% and we're modulating to 100%. Keep in mind, be patient. Now at 100% of fire, we'll now start to enable our first lag boiler. So over here, we're on our first lag, which was one of two. We're now in pre-purge. We're now in HSI warm-up. So this is going to go through the same sequence and light. So now we're running on our first member boiler. We're going to operate this, and we're now running at 100%. So both boilers in this example are running at 100%. And what I want to do is simulate what happens if you lose the leader or someone powers off that leader. So what I will do is with a call for heat under calculated set point, I will shut off this leader and then we'll focus on that member boiler. So right now we're in a timeout period and we're still running at 100% in this example, but be patient. It could take 60 to 90 seconds and we'll see a message box appear. Here's our message box. And the boiler is still operating. If we click on that message box, here it's going to give you a warning telling you that the cascaded master was lost. So we're now in backup set point and we will stay running in backup set point until the leader or master boiler in this example comes back on. If you have any technical questions, please contact the factory at 1-800-900-9276. Thank you.